Uh, Emil, good morning to you. And just this conversation, I'm sure you've been listening to it. This has lasted longer than many have thought, though perhaps not the Reddit crowd. Has this sort of meme stock phenomena lasted longer than you thought? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, you know, and in some ways it started with Hertz. If you remember what happened to Hertz a while back, everyone thought they were going to go bankrupt and then they raised money. It was a lot of small retail investors who held on and that stock at 30 cents is now six bucks and it made a lot of money. So this has continued along and I don't see how it stops if they keep making money. Now, you also call this a distributed short squeeze, but how do we know that it's retail Reddit investors doing, you know, the buying and that institutions aren't getting in on this, driving some of the momentum, too, as a way to partake in these gains that we're seeing? Yeah, there, so I called it a distributed uh, short squeeze, or you could even call it a crowdfunded short squeeze, where in the old days you had a bunch of firms uh, that were institutions that would sort of go and squeeze someone who was short in a stock, another institution. Now you have this widely distributed set of individual investors who are pooling their money together using some of these social media um, uh, platforms to push the meme out there. And then they're, uh, they're doing this squeeze. There might also be institutions riding behind that because you know that would be smart money following um, you know a momentum trade. So it's really all of the above. But I don't think institutions would be doing this in the same way uh, that the individuals have been able to do that because they're not on the social channels in the same way that the the Wall Street bets crowd is. Although that seems to be up for some debate. Goldman tries today uh, to look at various episodes, AMC, for example, and they say that small lot trading declines prior to the peak in share price. The implication, Goldman says, is that it's larger traders that are driving the price moves prior to and following the peak in the episodes we analyzed. Is it possible, maybe, that the big guys are better at this than we think? <laughs> it's definitely possible that they're... Uh... They're better at this than we think. So one could argue that it was invented by the Wall Street bets crowd, and then the institutions came in and saw an opportunity uh, to make this phenomenon even more intense, and uh, they made more money on the side. But my understanding of yesterday in Clover Health, it was 500 some odd million dollars lost by institutional short sellers as well. Emil, uh, we're get we're getting some headlines this morning from the Biden administration regarding. TikTok parent ByteDance. I believe you're an investor in ByteDance. Uh, what did you make of it? The headline says that Biden is close to issuing a new executive order targeting personal data collection by Chinese apps. So that would include TikTok. Uh, what do you make of what's happened, not just in the Trump administration, but if the Biden administration now goes after Chinese apps the same way that the Trump administration did? Well, so I also heard that they're not shutting TikTok down, which was the great fear, I think, for the ByteDance parent company that the TikTok app was going to get shut down in the U.S. unless they spun it off and was bought by Walmart and all these, uh, this group and Oracle and these companies that got together. I think that if it's a data collection thing, that could be worked around probably, right? You could, you could store data locally in the U.S. and maybe not commingle it with the Chinese data or other data that they have. Um, which might make it more palatable to the U.S. government from a security is that, standpoint. Is that good enough, Emil? Does that confront some of the security concerns? Because, yes, you're right, there is an important distinction between shutting it down and therefore cutting off any access versus do we trust the Chinese to make sure that they're going to keep that data separate, not tap into it at any point? I mean, if, if we have to be able to trust it in some way or we're going to walk into a balkanized Internet, the Chinese Internet, Maybe the, the Eastern world uses it's that. It's already only, balkanized. It's the balkanized. Chi China bans a number of our biggest apps. They sure did. And I remember when I was at Uber trying to make sure our app didn't get banned in China and we got kicked off the WeChat platform and so on. So <laughs> it has been a one-way street. Um, so I do think it's a little more balanced that the Biden administration is trying to add. But they're trying to do it maybe in a more uh, surgical way by making it about the data, not about the banning of apps completely. Like Google cannot be used in China, uh, Facebook cannot be used in China, but if TikTok can be used in the U.S. but the data is segregated, maybe that's a better answer. I don't know.